welcome class 6 in our e learning class and today we will read this chapter not read actually we will continue reading from this uh, chapter what is government from your social and political life book 1 so we have already seen the different uh, levels of government and the law that the government will make must be followed by every citizen of the country then even we have discussed the types of government one we have seen the democratic government another one another one we have seen government or um, that is monarchy type of government one is this democratic type of government another one is this monarchy type of government and uh, today we will read about this democratic governments india is a democracy <clears throat> this achievement is the result of a long and eventful struggle of the indian people there are other places in the world where people have also struggled to have democracies now the meaning of democracy we have already come to know that this is a type of government where people give the government the power to rule democracy uh, democratic type of government means the common people or the citizens of the country they give the government the power to rule so our india is also having this democratic type of government so you know that the main feature of a democracy is that the people have the power to elect their leaders so in a sense a democracy is the rule by the people because i am choosing the leader and that leader is go, going to form a government and that government in turn will prepare the laws and rules which will be implemented in a country and we all have to follow that rule or that law so you know uh, sorry uh, i missed the line so in a sense a democracy is the rule is rule by the people so in a sense a democracy is ruled by the people the basic idea is that people rule themselves by participating in the making of this rules democratic governments in our time are usually referred to as representative democracies in representative democracies people do not participate directly but instead choose their representatives here people they choose that means we choose our representatives we directly don't go to the parliament or to this uh, state legislature and there we start uh, governing the country no instead we are sending our representatives there so these representatives meet and make decisions for the entire population these days a government cannot call itself democratic unless it allows what is known as universal adult franchise so what is universal adult franchise this means that when you attain the age 18 that means you are becoming an adult at that time you are getting the right to vote that means you can choose your own leader and you can cast a vote so this means that all adults in the country are allowed to vote and why this uh, measure has been taken because we will come to know that beforehand before this uh, universal adult franchise the matter was totally different at that time women and people who are from this uh, poor uh, financial uh, scenario or poor belonging to poor community they were not allowed to vote so but it was not always like this can you believe that there was a time when governments did not allow women and poor to participate in elections in the, uh, their earliest forms governments allowed only men who owned property and were educated to vote so the men only the masculine gender and that also who owned huge property and that quite well educated they only had the right to vote 
so i am repeating this line once more in their earliest forms governments allowed only men who owned property and were educated to educated to vote this meant that women the poor the propertyless and the uneducated were not allowed to vote the country was governed by the rules and regulations that these few men made so all these few men who owned property and who were somewhat educated they prepared all the laws and uh, rules and accordingly the whole country used to be ruled or used to get ruled in india before independence only a small minority was allowed to vote and they therefore came together to determine the fate of the majority several people including gandhi ji was shocked at the unfairness of this practice and demanded that all adults have the right to vote this is known as universal adult franchise so many people they were against this system of that only the uh, well educated men or who are quite rich they will get the chance to uh, form the government and accordingly the whole country will be ruled no many were dead against of this one and one of them was gandhi ji and because of them this system had come in practice that is which is known as universal adult franchise when you are an adult you are having the right to vote and at that time it will not be seen you belong to which gender or what is your financial condition and whether you are quite uh, having uh, whether you are illiterate or you are well educated writing in the journal young india in 1931 sorry 1931 Gandhi ji said i cannot possibly bear the idea that a man who has got wealth should get the vote but a man who has got character but no wealth or literacy should have no vote or that a man who honestly works by the sweat of his brow day in and day out should not have the vote for the crime of being a poor man so gandhi ji has written this one in the journal young india in 1931 now another portion is there which is quite uh, important that nowhere in the world have governments willing willingly shared power all over europe and usa women and the poor have had have had to fight for participation in government women struggled to vote got strengthened during the first world war this movement is called the women's suffrage movement as the term suffrage usually means right to vote so in other parts of the world also the uh, scenario was same they are also the women and the moneyless people or the poor people they were not allowed to vote during the war many men were away fighting and because of this women were called upon to do the work that was earlier considered men's work so why women they were called upon for vote or called upon to cast the vote because the men they were away for fighting during the first world war so many women began organizing and managing different kinds of war when people saw this they began to wonder why they had created so many unfair stereotypes about women and what they were capable of doing in uh, most of the cases we can find that women they were not treated equally and they were considered insignificant but it was proved every time to be wrong a very wrong thinking a very wrong idea so women began to be seen as being equally capable of making decisions the suffrage sorry suffragettes the suffragettes demanded the right to vote for all women and to get their demands heard they changed themselves to railing in public places so these people who were protesting not people the women who were protesting that they must also get the right to vote they are known as suffragettes and what they had done they chained themselves to railing in public places so that what they are demanding that must be 
hard and that must be followed. Many suffragettes were imprisoned and went on hunger strikes and they had to be fed by force. American women got the right to vote in 1920 while women in the United Kingdom got to vote on the same terms as men some years later in 1928. So children with this we have completed this chapter. In my uh, next class I will try to give you some inside questions and their answers and we will uh, switch over to the next chapter which is key elements of democratic government. Till then stay at home and follow the class. Bye.